Okay, have a seat. Or lie down, that works too. So what's with the microphone? Oh, uh, yeah, I do record these meetings, but you shouldn't feel worried because I only listen back to my parts um, because I'm a huge narcissist, actually, so no worries. So it says right here in the video title that you're feeling a bit misunderstood. How so? Well, Doc, can I call you Doc? Sure. Well, Doc, everyone treats me like I'm just some glorified distortion pedal, but I really feel like I have so much more to offer, you know? Oh, excuse me, could you hold on just a second, please? Okay, continue. I mean, how many distortion pedals do you know that have eight distinct circuits? A full stereo path, multi-band filter, LFO, even a freaking envelope follower. Do you have any idea the creative potential all of these tools can unlock? Uh, no, not really. You can even use me as a plug-in for the love of- Okay, calm down. Take a deep breath. What did we say about escalating to your more aggressive character circuits? Sorry, 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 sorry. It just gets to me sometimes, you know. Just remember, you can't control what others think about you. You can only control what you do. Yeah, pretty good, huh? I'm gonna listen back to that later. I don't know, I guess I just feel like a bit of the black sheep of the family. I mean, have you seen the way the others look at me? I mean, I'm the only electron without a sequencer. What the hell, man? Hey! Pay attention! I'm paying you 500 bucks an hour! Hi. You don't know this, but I just spent like an hour making a track with the analog heat. Unfortunately, my audio was not recording for any of that. So... Now I'm just going to tell you what I did. Basically, I took you through step by step how I used the analog heat in a creative way to craft each and every sound that I used in this track. It's not an incredibly complex track, I just threw it together in an hour, but uh, I think it will show you kind of how you can use the analog heat and all of its circuits and all of its sound shaping devices to really craft sounds so that you don't have to mix them as much later. They kind of fit together really nicely. I want to kind of demonstrate what I did, especially on the drum patch, because I used Microtonic, which is a great drum BST. Unfortunately, I didn't save the actual pattern that I put together in Microtonic either. And then I rendered it with the analog heat and just deleted it altogether. Because why would you keep it? I mean, it's not like you would forget to record the audio. <laughs> so what I have done is tweaked one of the presets here and kind of thinned it out to sort of mimic what I did in the track itself, even though it's not exactly the same. So what Microtonic sounds like without analog heat activated, you can see, not activated, it sounds like this. Cool. Yeah, that's really nothing like what I did in the track, but <laughs> I'm gonna use some of the same techniques so you'll get the idea with the analog heat. I'm gonna pull up the plugin here because I think with the UI of the plugin, it's a lot easier to visualize what's happening. You can do all of this within the menus of the analog heat, as I showed you with no audio earlier. It's just a lot easier to see in the plugin. So let's go to an init preset and it's gonna start us off with a clean boost. I'm gonna bring down the input just a little bit so we're not clipping quite so hard. And when I activate it, you're not really gonna hear much of a difference on clean boost. That's pretty nice right there. 
It sounds really nice, but I'm gonna move to, let's say mid drive and see what that sounds like. And then we will start to play around with the LFO and the envelope follower. <laughs> What I want is for the envelope follower to kind of duck the signal down every time the kick hits. So I can have the bandwidth filter here basically just listen to the low frequencies. I'm gonna pull the trigger frequency trigger level down. I've already said all of these words so many times. They've lost all meaning. Dry wet level and give it some negative depth so that every time the kick hits, it should hopefully duck down the wet-dry mix right here. So we'll see that represented in the UI. See that? You can also send that to the drive. We have another envelope destination. What if I gave that some positive depth? Oh. Let's go sample and hold with the LFO. And let's go filter frequency. Let's actually go drive for that because I can do filter frequency here. And maybe also filter pan. Nice. Different circuit. Nice. Okay, so you can kind of see how interesting things can get really fast. The other thing I like about the plugin is we can actually assign some of Ableton's LFOs, envelope followers, to the parameters. So then we have even more LFOs and everything. You can also use CV and MIDI to control the device, which is really powerful as well if you have like a Eurorack system like I do over there. A really great creative sound shaping, sound design tool. Okay, so the other thing that I've done here that I did in the track itself. I used some Echo Boy and gave that some negative depth so that every time the kick hits, it ducks the Echo Boy, basically, the mix. So that's going to give this a little bit of extra kind of space. And I love the sound of echoes, delays, and reverbs being crunched up by saturation. It sounds really nice. So let's see what that sounds like. So you can see Echo Boy reacting to this envelope follower in Ableton. Again, without analog heat. With analog heat. Echo Boy. That is how I got this, which is the pattern that I used from Microtonic in the track and then promptly deleted, never to be heard again until now. I also did some Iridium work here with the analog heat. And basically what I used the analog heat for in that case was just to kind of accentuate the releases or accentuate the tails of the patches, uh, which are kind of piano patches that have some granular stuff that come in as well, some reverb that opens up. And I really wanted to accentuate that once again with the envelope follower in the analog heat. So that sounds like this. First, you have to unmute it. You 
can hear when it hits, when there's an attack, it ducks down, it ducks the drive, and ducks the, I believe, the wet-dry mix as well. It comes back up. Same principle we were using before, but in a much more subtle way. I think this is using the enhancement circuit. So that's really it. I just recorded in several layers of iridium on top of that, and then added some of my sampled piano, which is downstairs for the main body of the track. So all together, it sounds like this. Hey, thanks for sticking around. It feels like you've been with me literally all day for some reason, probably because I spent an incredible amount of time talking to no one. Nonetheless, if you like what you saw today, hit like. If you want to see more stuff like this, hit subscribe. And if you want to see me experiment in a little bit more of an extreme way with the analog heat, you can click on this video right here, which involves me running a massive pipe organ through a reverb and then through the analog heat for some Kind of surprising results. I'm sure that the analog heat really appreciated the ability to get a lot of this off of its chest, and I'll see you next time.